Okay, I mentioned that when um, we changed the file location over to our cloud storage, that we would need to navigate down to Program Data, SolidWorks, SolidWorks 2020, Language, English. And under that folder, you'll find the GTAL symbols and the properties.txt. I already copied the uh, properties from, uh, from the previous version just in case I uh, had any custom uh, additions. So I'm just going to copy. I'll leave that in the original location. But we'll copy that into the custom properties. And one of the things with program data is if you don't see it on your system, then you probably do not have hidden items checked. So uh, program data typically is a hidden item, and you won't see that folder and be able to navigate to it unless you've checked that box. All right, so once, uh, once we've done that, now my property should be available when we go into either File and Properties or come up to the um, standard toolbar and do file properties will take us into summary information. So the summary, we could write in the author, keywords, comments, title, subject, if we want to track that metadata. On the custom then, if my property.txt is now in that folder, I will see the list. If there's nothing populated in here, then we have to go over that pro program data folder and bring it back over to the cloud, or just make sure that it stayed in the default location. Again, I like to, to have um, things a little bit higher level and not where a system administrator has to be available to, uh, to make adjustments, even minor adjustments to some of these files. And then they're not so, uh, so hard to track. So if we wanted to build these into our template, then I would put things like a part number, and its text and a value. Uh, prior to probably 2012, uh, kind of a little ways back, um, you could not have that be a blank um, uh, field. Now it will let it um, go to um, uh, nothing input, or when we do the pull down for the value, it will go to a SolidWorks property. So typically would put in what I want my part number to look like if I do three letters and four numbers then that would be the prototype of what the part number is supposed to look like. In our types we have date numbers and logical operators yes or no. Alright so that one being um, being built in is going to be a custom property it's going to be at the I want to say the global setting for this uh, uh, global property for this uh, part. If I go to configuration specific, maybe that part number is going to be per um, uh, per the uh, the configuration that we could have one uh, part file with a dozen or you know literally hundreds of of uh, parts in them. Each one would have a separate part number related to its configuration. So pretty much the same thing. I put in my my default. All right, so if this information is already available in this um, in, in the summary information in the properties, then I want to make sure that whatever I build in the custom properties has that same field name, same uh, same information, so that anything we populate, we would see that it's already there if it was input manually over here, or that we wouldn't be overriding duplicating information as, as we go. So I'm going to cancel out of that real quick and we're going to come over to the custom properties and property page for part files was found. We can create now. Um, if you already have a template then you need to go to the file locations custom properties to point it to that location. The other way we get to it is come over to SolidWorks Resources and the very first item under the tools is going to be the property tab builder. All right, so we'll keep this kind of uh, kind of simple. Right now we have the control attributes as a part. And if we wanted to put in a message that would, I believe, show up. So uh, let's, let's just try it. Enter part properties. For the, uh, for the message, everything's going to be located in a group box so that it can be managed. 
And so if I bring a text box over, then the caption is part number and the name of the field, we can go see if it's available. And that way we're picking uh, similar items. Right now it is configuration specific. And I'll put in my default, what I want it to, uh, to look like, placeholders. All right, so that gives me my first um, box. Bring that down a little bit. Maybe we're going to do a revision. And I would go through and I would pick the fields and the data that I want to carry over. And one of the things I've done with revisions, and it's, um, you know, it's kind of a, a choice as you go. Uh, it's not going to let me do it, as I've made the revisions numbers so that I could increment the values. Um, and is it going to be revision for the, uh, the whole part, or revision for just the, um, uh, that configuration? Well, that can get pretty confusing, so I'd say if it's a revision, um, I want to revise the, uh, the part, and it's going to come back to the logic. We're going to have to try it out. But really, when I make these decisions, if I have any doubts, I'm going to put it on the configuration tab. All right, so revision, and the default value is rev A. Uh, if we wanted to put a list of drawn by, so you know, as I go through and pick these numbers, or pick these, uh, pick these fields, then in the list I could put um, my initials um, and um, you know I add the most common items so that it's just in the pull down. Or if we wanted names, then we wouldn't have to type it all out. But this is going to be kind of for the whole uh, the whole file, not just. Uh, per configuration, chances of somebody drawn by. And um, let's see if we went with um, another text box. We could go with the, uh, the date. So it would start off, you know, when the, uh, when the file was originally created, we'd be able to track that. And that one's just going to have a date value and be for the for the whole. So, uh, if I need a new level, then the group box. And when we're on the group box, is it expanded or collapsed? So maybe this one will show up collapsed. And then this is going to be things like the uh, the material properties. So let's add in a material and the name. If I don't see it in here, I can I can add it, I can create it, and it's going to be text, and we find the value because material, SolidWorks material, is going to read back to the material. And if it is, you know, granted we're in, in the part, and the configuration could have uh, different materials, so we may have a part that we make in brass, steel, and aluminum, and in that case... Um, we would want the each of the configurations to be able to manage it. And then um, I think what else uh, do we need? Maybe a finish. And finish might be more of a list. So if I bring that over, uh, yeah, just need to hit delete on the keyboard for that one. <laughs> and so finish, we might um, have uh, I do have that one and so we might have a raw stock um, you know free of uh, free of burrs might be our note uh, break all edges and we could have a, um, a black anodize a uh, clear anodize uh, powder coat And then we'd have to specify a color, but yeah, 
Yeah, I think if I hit enter, it'll add uh, another uh, another line, and then uh, maybe uh, chemfill if I can spell it. All right. So and then we go back and allow the custom. And again, we could have different levels. Maybe the configuration is uh, at different uh, different levels um, in the uh, in the process. So that gives me enough to uh, to get started. So we're going to go ahead and do a save, and this is going to come back to my system files, and I'm going to put this in my custom property. So this is my part template with the PRT PRP, so part properties template, and we save that, and then I can close out that window, and now in the part, because we've created that, I'm going to be able to pick those out. So the group box I didn't name, um, but if we expand this out, maybe this is material um, information, these are you know tracking information. Something like that. So we go back and, and revise that and update. The main thing is when I put in my part number, the um, this is my A assembly and part 001, revision A, and drawn by with a date of today. And then material is not specified yet, so for this, um, this particular configuration, if I tell it it's 6061, it wants me to save and make sure that I update. And then the finish can be raw stock. So we can automate this process a little bit. And when I hit apply and come back over to the properties, now I'm going to see in the configuration specific, the part number, the revision, the material, raw finish, and under the custom, drawn by and date. Those are items that we're going to use to populate our title block later on. So this is another one of those kind of an evolving process. We see what we need, what we're going to be including into the uh, the title block and need to have tracked. And we'll build this out over the course of a month or two and and uh, take input from the design team. And it doesn't ever really fall into place on the, uh, the first go around. Things that we think we need, we really didn't need. And... Uh, things that we didn't anticipate are going to always come up. So that will give us a start on our custom properties.